Welcome to another Electronics on the Floor, where we'll talk about automatic gain controls, why they're necessary and how you can build a simple example. Natural phenomena like sound and light have a very wide range, from very soft to very loud and very dim to very bright. These ranges are often far more than our sensors can comfortably handle. One example can happen in amateur radio. Supposing you're in a quiet location where there's little natural or man-made interference. You might be listening to a weak station down here and then all of a sudden a loud station up here comes on. At best that's unpleasant and at worst repeated exposure could damage your hearing. What we want to do is to compress the dynamic range of what's being presented to your ears, i.e. bringing the weak stations up a bit and the loud stations down a bit so there's less variation in the range of signals you hear on the band. The same can happen with transmitting or audio recording. Some sort of audio compression where the audio output is roughly the same, no matter what distance the microphone is from your mouth, would really help readability, especially if stations on the other side of the world are trying to pick out your weak signal. The circuitry required to achieve that is called an audio compressor or automatic gain control. The louder the input signal, the less the gain, and the quieter the input signal, the louder the gain. So the output from an audio compressor is a much narrower range than what's presented at the input, where signals could either be very quiet or very loud. So what does an audio compressor look like? Here is an audio amplifier which could be a transistor, IC, or even valve design. That's the output, that's the input. That's the positive supply rail, and that's negative. What we need to be able to do is take a bit of that audio output and use it to somehow control the audio input. To compress the signal, the louder the output from the amplifier, the more its gain is reduced. A bit like turning down the volume control, except it's done automatically. There are several ways of achieving this. One I've been playing around with in association with the Bitex transceiver, which doesn't have an automatic volume control of its own, is the use of a light emitting diode and light dependent resistor. We'll now explain the circuit going from right to left. This is the IC audio amplifier, such as an LM386. It's probably already in the receiver or transceiver that you're seeking to modify. Here is the volume control, again that will most likely be in the circuit. Audio to it comes from an audio preamp or possibly from a receiver's detector. I've added a 4.7K resistor here. The purpose of that is to form a voltage divider in conjunction with the light dependent resistor and the volume control. When there's no light, the resistance of the LDR is high and it has a negligible effect in the circuit. However, when light strikes it, its resistance drops. That forms a voltage divider and reduces the audio level present at the audio amplifier's input. In doing that, it reduces the output, thus providing an audio compression, reducing the amplified output when a signal presented is loud. What about the LED part of the circuit? The object of that is to shine brightly when there's a loud signal, and not at all when the signal is quiet or non-existent. The audio from the speaker is connected to this 10K potentiometer, which sets the AGC level. That is rectified by this diode, which could be any type, and 1N4148 is what I used. That goes into a resistor, and then into the base of this transistor, which is switched on when there's sufficient audio level. When the transistor is switched on, the LED shines. That applies light to the light-dependent resistor, which, as I mentioned before, reduces the gain of the audio stage thus providing an audio compression effect. The 100 ohm resistor here provides some current limiting. If it wasn't there, the current would be too high and the LED may burn out. The 4.7 microfarad here provides a degree of delay. 
I found when I connected its negative terminal to Earth, it provided some popping on loud signals. Connecting it to the emitter relieved that. Here's a demonstration of the AGC connected to a Bitex 40 meter SSB transceiver. Right here you can see the LED flashing on a reasonably strong signal. This is the AGC potentiometer. When you turn it off, the LED is off and strong signals are louder. This is AGC at maximum. Note the LED. And this is the AGC off. Here's an example of a strong signal, VK2NEO. The AGC is at full throttle. Remove the AGC. The benefit of the AGC is much less here because of the high electrical noise level. But if you're at a location where that wasn't there, then the AGC would become more useful. There's a couple of things I want to mention about this AGC circuit, which being simple is probably not the best. The first thing is that the range of inputs compared with the range of outputs isn't a particularly high ratio, i.e. it's not compressing as much as it could. That could possibly be improved if I was to increase the gain before the transistor that drives the LED. The other thing is that I'm driving the transistor that switches the LED straight off the speaker, which follows the amplifier that's controlled by the volume control. That means there'll be some interaction between the volume control and the AGC potentiometer. If I wanted to avoid that, I would build a second audio amplifier, one that was dedicated to the AGC and didn't drive a speaker, nor was affected by the volume control. Nevertheless, the AGC provides some useful limiting action and saves your ears from very strong signals. This has been our look at automatic gain controls, why you might need them, and a simple way of applying them, at least at audio frequencies. So grab an LED, an LDR, wrap them in tape, and see if you too can build a simple audio gain control circuit. They can be very useful for homebrew receivers and transmitters, and only need a few parts to implement.